Welcome to CCTV America. I'm Susan Roberts. We begin with the violence in the Middle East. The UN Security Council is calling for a ceasefire. All 15 members are urging a de-escalation and resumption of direct negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. This call comes after another night of Israeli airstrikes targeting more than 60 sites in Gaza and more rocket attacks aimed at Israel. CCTV's Roy Ruttenberg joins us live now from Tel Aviv. And Roy, we understand that one of these raids killed relatives of the Hamas leader in Gaza. What more do you know? Yeah, we heard from Ismail Haniya, the former uh, Hamas prime minister there in Gaza, confirming that a rocket hit the home of his sister, killing two of his nephews. He made those comments on his own Facebook page. It was reported widely in Israeli media and, of course, several others injured, not just in that attack, which reportedly killed six, but several others. I should also update you that in the last 45 minutes, there were a number of sirens sounded in central Israel and Tel Aviv and other cities in this vicinity, all at the same time. This after a warning issued by Hamas about 45 minutes earlier that they will strike at 9 p.m. local. Well, they were about seven minutes late, but the warnings themselves put many Israelis on edge. Now, we should remind our viewers that in Israel, many of the residents here have uh, safety shelters, bomb shelters, and of course, Israel has the so-called def the defense shield, so-called Iron Dome, that is shooting down a lot of these rockets. In Gaza, of course, they don't have those facilities, so a lot of the strikes on home on homes and other buildings are causing casualties. We know that uh, a home for disabled was also struck in Gaza, and at least one mosque, Israel says, that mosque was used uh, to store uh, rockets rockets and rocket launchers, the types being used to attack Israel. Well, Roy, the Arab League is due to meet in an emergency session this week. We understand, can the League influence Israel? Well, the Arab League has a sort of interesting relationship with Israel. It's not an official relationship. They don't recognize Israel. There, was, there are members of the Arab League who have uh, a peace arrangements with Israel, including Egypt and including Jordan. Uh, the meeting was called in Cairo, where the Arab League is headquartered. Uh, it is headed at the moment by Kuwait, and it was called by uh, the Kuwait chairmanship of that meeting. And the idea here is to form a unified front in response to the escalation. It's unclear whether uh, a statement from the Arab League might have impact on Israel, but Israel does have some uh, 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 individuals in the Arab League who are more keen to establish relations with Israel. In the past, we heard of the Saudi peace initiative, of course, being led there by uh, Riyadh. It's unclear, though, what impact uh, and voice uh, those types of uh, more moderate voices may have, given the rising death toll here. And, of course, this will be added to the statements that are coming out, not just from the Arab League, but, as you mentioned, from the U.N., various sides calling for a ceasefire, calling for a de-escalation and a halt to the violence that ta that's taking the lives of civilians. It's unclear, though, if the parties on both sides are willing to listen to any of these voices, of course, including the Arab League. Ruby Rettenberg reporting live from Tel Aviv. Thank you for that.